Today we're talking about intervals again. I don't know what to do with my hands. Today we're talking about intervals again. But before we get started, just a quick clarification. Last time, we counted the interval numbers from one note up to the next, but we could also play them from the top note down, or even at the same time. So you see, the interval number would still be exactly the same. Intervals have a quality and a number. Remember from last time? We got the number. So this time, we're gonna talk about the quality of an interval. See, a quality is an adjective that you put before the number. It's an adjective. 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 What are those qualities, you ask? Every interval has one of the five qualities. Major, minor, perfect, augmented, diminished. Each interval has a unique and identifiable sound you can hear without looking at any music. So let's apply our quality and names. Yes. Let's start with the major and the perfect intervals. If you know your major scale, this is gonna be so easy. And if you don't, go watch my video on scales. Whole, whole, half whole, 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 half. This forms a major scale no matter which note you start on. In this case, we're starting on C because it's easy. So these are our notes in a C major scale. Start on scale degree one and we go to two, the next scale degree. In any major scale, the step from scale degree one to scale degree two is major. It's a major second. And we already know that that step is one whole step or two half steps. So let's say we uh, we jump from scale degree one, scale degree three. In any major scale, if you go from one to three, it's a major third. Major scale, major third, and we already know that it's two whole steps. Whole, whole, which is also equal to four half steps. So let's say we start on one and we go to four, a fourth, right? but this is not a major interval. You could maybe guess what kind of interval it might be. It's a perfect fourth. There's no such thing as a major or minor fourth. A perfect fourth is five half steps. Whole, whole, plus a half. Let's say you start on one and go to five. That's another perfect interval. It's a perfect fifth. To get there, you need a whole step, a whole step, a half step, and a whole step seven half steps from the tonic. Now we have one to six, and the sixth happens to be major. To get to the sixth, we need to go a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, and a whole step. Nine half steps to get there from the tonic. So let's say you go from one to seven. Well, it's a major seventh. And we can just assume that we're two from the last one. So two plus nine, 11 half steps. If we go from one to the last scale degree eight, so we're going from C to shining C. It's perfect. It's a perfect eighth. Also called a perfect octave from seven to eight is a half step. We can add one to our major seventh and get 12 half steps. That's all of the major and perfect intervals. Here's some interesting things. If you start on scale degree one and you end on scale degree one, I know it doesn't make any sense, but it's called a perfect unison. It's abbreviated P-U. P-U. Oh, I smell something fierce. So now that we have them all written out so clearly, do you notice anything about these? You notice it now? How about now? That's right. Both groups of major intervals are grouped together, and the rest are perfect. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.